Why do Ravens play so many players out of position and not allow them to really play to their strengths? Why Tyree Phillips can really help out this Ravens running game? Why Wings should really simplify this defense? These and much more on this episode of NFL Questions from Subs. Yeah, this feels like a dream. YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's engraving here with another video and another episode of NFL questions from subs and what that is is a series where you can ask me any NFL question and we answer it in a video just like this if you want to be part of it you can send me an email to team keep it clean at gmail.com or for the patrons and, and shout out to the patrons you can send it directly on Patreon. If you want to join them and become a team keep it clean patron you can go to patreon.com slash engraving vids and if you don't want to it's still fine. Now, um, something that I just I wanted to touch on uh, real quick. Don't let nobody tell you what you can't do. Don't, don't let anybody determine what your limitations are. Don't let anybody down you for doing things the way that you do them. Unless it's wrong now. If it's something that's wrong, illegal, well, I ain't talking about something like that. I don't condone that. But you go for it. You go for it. You reach for it. You go do your thing. And, and you be proud of it, too. I love y'all, team. Keep it clean. We got some fire questions that I'm proud that y'all sent in. Let's do it. First question came from my guy, Alex L. He said, how's it going, Engraving? I hope you and your fam are doing great. Oh, we are doing phenomenal. Thank you. I hope your fam is doing even better. He said, I, my name is Alex, and I'm a passionate Ravens fan from SoCal. Been watching for around three years now. Oh, I appreciate that, man. He said, now the first email that I sent, watching videos have become routine every day for me. Just wanted to show appreciation to you and let you know that your videos, or what your videos mean. I appreciate it, man. I got a two-year-old daughter that is always paying attention and watches the videos with me. After the Colts game, we were driving home with the fam and I turned on your recap and your intro song was on and she just started singing it. Uh, and the whole family started laughing, man. It brought so much joy to me and had just helped me realize even more how you're somewhat a part of the family. Thank you, Engraven. Know your worth. P.S. I know she here. <laughs> she your youngest supporter at two years old and take care if i had a question it would be uh would you ever think of doing like a team keep it clean get together barbecue in the future and have like questions uh questions in person or oh, the little question from subscribers in person just curious well we did that we did the uh we did i appreciate that though shout out to you and your family and your daughter um thank thank you for that but we we did the uh the the, the team keep it clean flag football game a couple years ago and then, of course, um, that that was going to be an annual thing. Uh, we first did it in 2000. What did we do that in? 2018 or 19? We did it in, oh, 18, 18. Because that, yeah, 18 was the first year that we did it. Because that's when um, I, had got, I had got laid off from my job. Um, so that's when we first started doing this, like, full time in 2018. So I guess that's, that's another reason why me and Lamar, we always joined at the hip, man. We always joined at the hip because that's that's when everything like really really started uh, full time. Um, but because y'all 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 know the story already. Because uh, just a quick recap, we have been working at I have been working at my job for like three three and a half years, something like that. It was going good. I had just recently got a promotion four months prior. Then all of a sudden one day we came in, they were like, "Oh, this whole department, y'all been laid off." It was like, "Oh, <laughs> okay." Um, so yeah, then, yeah, and, and we could dive into it more later on, but, uh, that's when we started doing this, like, full time, we started really going at it, and that was when, yeah, we had the, uh, the first annual flag football game that summer, well, yeah, I think the summer before the 2019, anyway, I don't even remember, but anyway, we, we've done it, and it's, it's on YouTube, too, you can look it up, uh, the, you can go to, uh, Team Keep It Clean flag football game, and it'll pop up. Um, so yeah, it's been done, and in the future, hey, uh, who knows, man? Who knows? I'm I'm not sure. It just depends on how really everything goes. Next question came from my guy Akeem. He said, "What's up, Engraven? Hope all is well." With well, the Ravens sitting in a nice spot at the bye, I wanted your thoughts on some of the decisions we made as far as pass offensive line moves and what we should do to get our franchise quarterback better protected moving forward, whether in free agency or through the draft. Well, just with that part alone, and he still got more to his question. I, I think you got to do a good blend of both. You have to. Uh, Ronnie Stanley, you cannot rely on him. You, you can't. Now my dog, she just moved the mic. Anyway, you cannot rely on Ronnie Stanley. You cannot rely on Jawan James. You, you have to almost put yourself in a mindset of 
we're not getting those guys back. And even if we do get those guys back, they may not be 100 percent. So you have I, I, and, and it's tough to say because especially with Ronnie Stanley, but you're locked in with Ronnie Stanley. He ain't going nowhere. Um, so you but you have to have the mindset as if getting those guys back would be bonuses. You have to. So I feel like the Ravens have to attack this offseason with through the draft and through free agency at their tackle position, that interior offensive line, too. I do expect Tristan Colon Castillo to take over for Bradley Bozeman because I don't think they're going to keep Bradley Bozeman. I think he's he's a, every, every week that price tag goes up well against the Bengals. It went down a little bit. But overall, uh, that price tag been going up. Uh, so I, I think he's going to – the famous saying when um, – when, I think when uh, – <laughs> When uh, Ravens fans and Ravens media, they, they basically say, Ravens ain't about to pay this dude. This is the, the nice way that they say it. They say, he's priced himself out of Baltimore. They love saying he, he's priced himself out of Baltimore. I think that saying came up from just, like I said, fans and media trying to ease the pain a little. He's priced himself out of Baltimore. It's too much money. But, yeah, I, I think Bradley Bozeman is going to be gone. He's going to go cash in. Um, and, and Tristan Colon Castillo is going to take over. Uh, but... And Kevin Zeidler, he'll be another year older. I think they signed him. What, he, he's on a two- or three-year deal, one of those. He's on a multi-year deal. Uh, Alejandro Villanueva, I think he'll be going. Um, but, yeah, you, you got you to gotta, you gotta do some work. But, anyway, I didn't even get to his whole question. He said, personally, I like Ronnie Stanley and believe he is one of the best left tackles in the league when healthy. But I see the writing on the wall before we sign him and prefer that we sign Orlando Brown over him, mostly because Orlando is more of a proven availability guy. Can't argue with that at all. Can't. Uh, he said, I, "I never liked Makari at center, but always wonder why we, why would not, why would, why, <laughs> why we would not give him a shot as a long-term option at left guard, given the known issues we've had there. Bozeman was always best at center, in my opinion, uh, and is showing us that his natural position was where he should have been all along. Yeah, but it was one of those things where Ravens already had a center." So they weren't going to be like, all right, you know what, we got a center, you know, all right, Bozeman, move, or, or let you take over, even though we got one already. So that, that's what I think that was. Zyla has been very serviceable and seems to fit in nicely. And right tackle to me should have been addressed in the draft instead of trying to count on an aging vet and Big Al to be able to make this position switch. It seems like the Ravens brass relied too much on trying to play guys out of position instead of really playing the right guy at their natural position. This is not only about offensive line. This, this is an issue right here. This is big. This is something serious right here. And I'm so glad that you said this because this has happened a lot. I was just talking to my guy Josh about this yesterday. Well, not yesterday when y'all see this. I'm recording this video on Monday, November 1st at 1029 a.m. When y'all see this, who knows? But this is an issue. He said, he also said, uh, how do we address this offensive line moving forward at every position, knowing now that it is a strong possibility that Ronnie Stanley may never be back to his former elite play at left tackle. Curious to hear how you would go about strengthening our offensive line for the future, and let's hope the second half of the season gets better so we can protect our franchise unanimous MVP. All right, appreciate that, man. This is phenomenal, Akeem. Um, so we already answered that question. We, we answered that before he even read all of his question. Um, so like I said, you, you can't rely on Ronnie Stanley. You can't rely on Juwan James. I think Alejandro is going to be gone. Um, you you, you got to address both free agency and the draft. And like I said, act like those guys are bonuses. Get in, act like getting those guys back up because it is bonuses. They are bonuses. But anyway, um, the playing guys out of position, that's so big because the Ravens, they've been doing that for so long. And they, they wonder sometimes why guys struggle. The most recent obvious one has been Patrick Queen. And it's something that I, need, I didn't even realize. But they said in, in, in LSU, he wasn't the mic. They said he was a wheel. Ravens put him at the mic. He struggled. They moved him to the wheel. He's been doing better. But it's like, oh, okay. All right, well, there's this one. But then uh, Prochet, James Prochet. Now, Ravens, I get them a slight pass because last year the offseason was what the offseason was. And it really wasn't the offseason. But James Prochet is a 50-50 guy. Uh, a little physical receiver, but 50-50 guy, jump ball guy. That's the type of receiver he is. Ravens didn't use him there at all. They didn't use him there at all. And he was out there on the field a little bit. I mean, they really ain't hardly use him. He only got two passes thrown his way. And not that you're going to force feed anybody, but still. But Devin Duvernay, who was out there. Devin DuVernay, a receiver in college, you, you throw him a screen, 
he takes off. You get him in open space, he does his thing. Now, you can still, of course, have him as a little deep threat and whatnot, but use him like how he's how he was used in college. That's the reason you drafted him, right? Right? They don't do that with Devin Duvernay. They, they didn't do it his rookie year. They still haven't done it this year. So, still waiting. With Hollywood. Hollywood, they just, well, Hollywood, they just use him as a deep threat, and that was pretty much it. Um, something that I have been screaming ever since 2019 season. After 2019 season, when we saw what they did with him in the playoffs, I said, man, why don't they use him in a, like they use him in the playoffs for every single game? Why don't they do that? If they did that, oh, man, this dude would just eat. And that was 2020 season. We saw the same thing. Oh, Hollywood missed the goal route pretty much. Um, but And then in the playoffs, they actually used they, they It was playoff Hollywood. They used him in all these different ways and stuff. In, in the Titans game, in the Bills game, all that stuff. Uh, but now it wasn't until this season that they really started using him like playoff Hollywood in a regular season. And look what he's doing. And look what he's doing despite having those drops, too. Pookie, what you doing, man? What are you doing? Man. I guess she, she, she really want to get involved in the video, man. But anyway. Um, <laughs> she kept moving the mic. Anyway, we're not editing that out either. We're keeping it. Um, so anybody who watches part of the video, I appreciate y'all. And I love you. Uh, and I love Pookie too, but you can't be doing that, Pookie. I love you, but you can't be doing now. Nah, she just put a paw on my knee. I love you too, but anyway, um, with uh, you know, it's just she just she really want to get in the camera. I, I know she, I know she does. Come here, Pookie, because I, I know I know you want to say what's up to everybody. I know you want to say what's up. There you go. Come here, because you just oh, there she goes. Look, look that way. There you go. All right. Appreciate you, Pookie. Thank you. But you, you can't keep moving the mic. You can't keep doing that. Sit down. You got to relax, man. Anyway, um, so my, my point is that with Lamar Jackson, initially, Lamar Jackson, they had this dude just as a gimmick. He ain't no gimmick. But rookie year, talking about. They had gimmick. And I know they, they just really want to get this guy on the field. By any means possible. But they it's a little worrisome now. It's like, oh boy, they're gonna have this guy just as a gimmick guy. But they it, it ended up working itself out. Um, so I I I just this is something that Ravens do. Tyus Bowser. This guy, he um he's a pass rusher. Now he can't cover now. He can cover too, but he's a pass rusher. Don't let him pass rush. Adafe away. He's a pass rusher. Now, I know he said that, oh, I don't want to just be a pass rusher specialist. I want to be a, a, just a, a good player. I forgot what the exact quote was. She just moved it again. But Adafi away. They got this dude dropping back. They got this dude doing all sorts of things, playing in, interior defense. No. He's an outside linebacker. Have him, as, and he's an outside linebacker pass rusher. Have him rush the pass. You need that speed there. And Matt Judon. Matt Judon is another one. Like Matt Judon, pass rusher. He can rush the passer. But in Wink's defense, you got him doing all this and that in the third. I know you want to be creative, and I get that. I understand it. But have guys do what they do. Have them do what they do. And, and that, now you see he, what he's doing over there with the Patriots. Yannick Ngakwe. Yannick Ngakwe. Now, it wasn't the best fit now. Wasn't the best fit. Um, but still, even with him, same thing. You keep moving guys, you keep bringing in guys. Yeah, you want to keep guys fresh, but at the same time, you also should want to get guys in a rhythm. And he spoke on it, and it's true. So this is a this is a Ravens issue that it, that it's not new. It's not new. Kamele Correa, oh, that was one of the biggest ones. This this dude was an outside linebacker, pass rusher, pass rusher. What did the Ravens have him do? Oh. Man, we're going to have him play middle linebacker, and we're going to wonder why he's struggling there. Why is this guy struggling there so much? What, what's the problem? It's not what he did in college. That's not why you drafted him. Now, of course, you want guys to fit into your scheme, but you got to get guys that fit your scheme. And you like it's like if, if you're going to draft somebody, you're drafting them because you saw what they did in college and you see their potential. Why don't you use that potential and, and cash in on it? And, and, and actually, like, use them for what they specialized in. 
It's it's just been like the weirdest thing, man. Next question came from my guy Les. He said, "What's up, Engraven? Hope you're good. I'm not one to dwell on losses and nausea. The the the, the defeat against the Bengals, it's in the books. Uh, and the team, they just have to work on getting better and more consistent. Credit to Burrow, he had a good game, but our secondaries made it look a bit too easy for the Bengals at times. And some of the touchdowns were very soft. And our O line." Big yikes. Anyway, my question is about the media. As I'm in Britain, I don't get ESPN, although I do see what's being talked about in my news feed. And of course, your video, so thanks for keeping us informed. I appreciate that. Uh, is it mainly just ESPN that seems to want to run this narrative of hate on Lamar? No, it is not. Um, or is it similar from other pundits in the media over there? How has the media over there reacted to Mahomes this season with KC's struggles? Um, they've, with, with, no, it's not just ESPN. It's, 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 it's pretty much all of them. Um, now, you do have some guys on each network that'll be like, hold up, no, 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 that's not true about Lamar. Lamar is a quarterback, Lamar can throw, da 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 But then the majority is like, no, he's this, he's that, he's a running back playing quarterback, he uh, he need to get better at passing the ball, he need to get better from the pocket, uh, all that stuff. They'll, they'll, they'll have these, um, they'll try to make it sound professional, like, and the, the way that they'll word stuff um It'll sound like, oh man, wow, that's that's a really good point, but it'll it'll be a terrible take. Uh, but with Patrick Mahomes, um, they have been saying that he's been playing bad, but I know a lot gets deflected to the defense, and the defense has been bad too. Um, but Patrick Mahomes, he's been turning that ball over too. So, um, but he he doesn't get it the same as Lamar does, not not nearly the same, uh, and he never will. He never will. So it, it is what it is. Uh, he said, how did the media react to Josh Allen and the Bills' defeat to the Titans? No, they, they said that's not on him. They said it's not on him. So, yeah, it's, it's, or, or other quarterbacks when they have a bad day at the office. Yeah, it, it's never going to be, um, it, it has never been like that, and it's never going to be like that to where these other quarterbacks get reacted to or talked about the same as Lamar. Lamar has a bad day. Oh, man. oh, I see. I told y'all. I told y'all he can't throw. I told y'all he's not a good quarterback. I told y'all he's not a leader. I told you he can't pass. I told you this. I told you that. But other quarterbacks have a bad day at the office. Oh, he he just had a buff. He just had a bad day. He'll bounce back. We, we we've seen this before. He'll bounce back. So. Uh, he said, I get that pundits have opinions, which is cool. Everyone is entitled to that, true. Uh, but some of the ongoing narrative about Lamar just seems a little bit desperate. Like, these guys need to stay relevant uh, and interesting as pundits uh, or as a TV network by creating a mountain out of a molehill. Uh, keep up with the great work. As always, much peace and love to team. Keep it clean. I, I appreciate you, man. Next question came from my boy Howard. He said, what's happening, Graven? I've seen your latest vid and agree with your takes on the Ravens' injury situation and their poor play in the Bengals game. Also want to acknowledge that I was the one in a video that suggested that Patrick Queen move over from Mike Linebacker to Will Linebacker. In the very next game, they made that switch. I called that one. I think Tyree Phillips being at, back at starting right tackle is an upgrade because we need that big mauling presence on the offensive line to enhance the running game. Uh, what's your thoughts on my observations and predictions? Yeah, with Tyree Phillips... Um, yeah, that, that could uh, help a lot with the run game. Um, now, again, it sucks that Makari is out. Uh, but I think Tyree Phillips will will help us in the running game a lot. Now, with the passing game, uh, it could be a little decline. Hopefully, Tyree Phillips gets up to speed, especially after having this bye week and whatnot. And he'll come back and just be ready to go. And, and, and I'm sure he'll be better from last year because last year, he ain't have no off season. An offensive line is a very hard. I mean, any any position in in football is a hard position. But offensive line, you gotta learn technique. You gotta learn how to block. You gotta learn how to run block, pass block. You gotta learn so many different stuff. Your stances and all that. Uh, how to go against different pass rushes and their different styles and whatnot. Uh, so it's a challenge. Um, so he should be better equipped this this go round. Um, but yeah, uh, with with Patrick Queen moving, yeah, he's been better. He's been more comfortable. He's played a lot less, but. He's been playing better. So this is where it starts to really get his confidence built. Next question came from my guy, BB. He said, listen, fam, I think I got it. What if Ravens sign a true center? Well, they got Bradley Bozeman, but again, I think he's going to be going after this year. But anyway, he said, what if they sign a true center and when they were able to move Bradley to another position on the offensive line? Not to take anything from, from away from he, him playing center. He's a beast. This O-line is depleted enough. Uh, also, I do understand the chemistry it takes between a quarterback and a center. It might be a plus to be able to move Bozeman. Um, nah, I, I wouldn't do that because I, I do understand that the offensive line has been having some weaknesses, but you don't want to make a position of strength uh, a weakness because he is a true center. That's what he did in college, and now he's back doing that, and he's been doing a really good job. Um, but you don't, you don't want to weaken a position 
um, just to try to strengthen some other ones a little bit. But, I, yes, I, I would say no for that one. And he said, also, Patrick Queen is a work in progress. Let's try not to critique him just yet. It takes time to perfect your mistakes. Uh, thanks for the channel, homie. Hashtag team, keep it clean, and hashtag positive. I mean, with, with Patrick Queen, and really with any NFL player, with their job being on display like that, they're going to get critiqued. Um, but it's, it's about, in my opinion, it's about respectfully critiquing them. If they're struggling here, if they're struggling there, okay, we can talk about it. We could also talk about what they do good. We can talk about both the good and the bad, but my biggest thing is that people do it respectfully. Not to be, oh, man, this guy sucks. Oh, this guy's terrible. Oh, this guy's this. Uh, this guy's in the NFL. If he sucked, then uh, trust me, he definitely wouldn't make it that far. He wouldn't. So, yeah, that, that, that's all it's about in my eyes. And the last questions on this episode of questions from subs came from my guy, Flirt Nowinski. He said, hey, it's your boy, Flirt Nowinski, back again. Hope all is well with you and yours. First off, I'd like to give a shout out to Anthony Avery because as many times as he got targeted in the Bengals game, you would think that he would have gave up something, but he didn't. LOL. Uh, but on to my first question, what do you think we can do to get our guys to wrap up? Man... I don't know. But anyway, he said, I was serving through Ravens Twitter and everybody was on was on this get wink out of here thing. But watching the game, the blitz was dialed up correctly. If they didn't miss so many tackles, they would be praising that man. LOL. Uh, on a slant, Chase broke like six tackles. True. Yeah, that was that 80-something yard touchdown. Um, for Ravens to wrap up, man, I uh, I guess they just, they just got to like go back to fundamentals. And maybe, oh, maybe Wink could... Maybe he could just try to simplify some stuff for a little bit, like and, and and take take little baby steps, go backwards a little bit, like slow down the defense a little bit, just simplify it a little bit to where guys they ain't got to think about so much, they ain't doing so much, and it just gets a little more basic. Have it be a little more basic, so again, guys, their, their tasks are simple, their tasks are are easy or whatnot. And then you start ramping it up. As you see, they completing the easy stuff. Then you start ramping it up to the harder stuff. That's that's what I would do. Anyway, he said, um, what I will get on Wink about is the zone blitz. He just needs to stop it. Like I said in week one, zone blitzing is not for us. It's always been a big gaping hole in the middle of the field. And it's always the middle. Yes, uh, the middle of the field be wide open. It's like, hey, hey, offense is, hey, y'all, y'all want some real estate right here? Y'all want to buy some land right here? Hey, check it out. It's wide open. Anyway. Also, along with wrapping up, what do you think will spark our line? Because I know a lot of people will want to blame Marlowe for losing the game for us. I mean, you can make a case he gave up three TDs. But <laughs> the reason our offense started off slow was the line play. I agree 1,000%. Uh, the offensive line was not blocking for Lamar. They weren't. And anyway, he said, uh, if it wasn't for Lamar snapping the ball and having to make four defenders miss before throwing the ball, it was a line with the holds. I jumped out of my seat when Lamar had the 50-yard run, then boom. I seen him run out of bounds, and they threw a flag. I was like, well, it's time to go beat the traffic. <laughs> Last but not least, I'm not a person to blame refs in the game because if we played how we needed to play, then we would have won even if the refs. Um, but did you notice early in the first quarter, I believe the second drive, Burrow tried to sneak or try to sneak, got met in the backfield, which was clearly a loss uh, for at least two, but he got fourth He got fourth and one. And the play right after that, tack, the tackle clearly jumped before the ball was snapped. I was in my seat going nuts. Oh, I didn't see it. I, I didn't see it. The, the play that just really stood out to me was the first touchdown that Burrow threw to Yuzuma. Yuzuma, I forgot his name. Anyway, the tight end that was dogging us. Uh, because on that play, Calais Campbell was clearly being held. And it was like, it was, it, was, it was just Burrow, it was the offensive lineman and Calais Campbell. So it was easy to see, but it, was, it wasn't called. Um, he said, how do you think we can clean up the tackling, line play, and penalties? Oof. Like I said, the tackling, just simplify stuff. Uh, the offensive line play. Mm. Now, that's a tough one because I, I just, I don't know about that one. I don't know. Oh, you know what? Some screen plays, um, some rollout plays. Uh, and, and, and run, trying to really establish a run game. So instead of the offensive line just going backwards all the time, they can go forward. And they can push. They can engage. They can initiate the contact. So I think that would help, a lot, help out a lot. And the penalties, um, that's just a, a, a repetition thing. I feel like they just got to repeat doing the same stuff over and over again, and hopefully successfully, though. Like in game, and, and the penalties should slow down. Because you just got to get into more of a rhythm. I think when you, when you start getting penalties – um, I think that could show that you you out of rhythm, you're out of sync. 
But he said, because if this line is going to continue to be our problem, sad to say, but it only gets worse during the playoffs, LOL. But I do think the Ravens suffer from what all other NFL teams suffer from, and that's the belief in Superman when you look at Russ, uh, Aaron Rodgers, Cam, Big Ben, just to name a few. Uh, what do they all have in common? Their teams put in the O-line last because of their ability to make plays every single one of them. They neglected that until something bad happened to the QB, and I think that's pretty weird. Uh, you would think that if you have a special player like that and you've seen so many other teams fall victim uh, to that, you will switch it up. But it seems like teams always will fall victim to Superman. Ooh. That is something right there. And, hey, you know, I mean, everybody knows what Lamar can do. So that allows you to sort of be a little cheaper offensive. Ah, oh, we ain't got to do all that at offense. Ah, oh, we could just do this in offense, and we'll be straight. Um, And with Ronnie Stanley, I think they – I mean, you don't expect Ronnie Stanley to be out. Well, you don't expect Ronnie Stanley to be out, uh, especially for this long. Um, And you don't expect Patrick McCarty to go down. You ain't expect Tyree Phillips to go out. Uh, you ain't expect all these injuries to happen. It, it's, it's just been rough. Uh, but still, um, I know a lot of people, like, especially during draft time and whatnot, they were just livid, man, that the Ravens didn't go offensive line more. And, I mean, we, we, we've seen the results. Uh, and he also, he also said, uh, as I said before, Le'Veon Bell doesn't fit in our system. I mean, if the line clears a crazy hole in the defense, he'll pick up a first down. But bearing that, it's nothing happening. Why is Tyson not getting the, the bulk? Like, I understand about the negative reinforcement, but to what cost? Losing? Not saying Bell isn't the reason why we lost, but in the Bengals game, uh, Bell definitely slowed up the offense a lot. If we notice this, why don't you think they notice it? I, I really think with Le'Veon Bell, they just hoping. They waiting and they hoping like, man, he got to break one. Something's got to give. Something. Because uh, he's a good blocker. But just as a run, yeah. I, and like I said earlier, I didn't think that he was a good fit. Uh, but then I saw like he got the ability to make quick decisions. But this hasn't really been making the quick decisions. Uh, and it's just hasn't been the best experiment so far. Uh, hopefully... They can get some things going uh, after the buy to where it does look a lot better and things go a lot better. But it's just one of those things where we just got to wait and see. Uh, if if I feel like right now um, our best runner that will get opportunity uh, is Devontae Freeman. And uh, I, did, I said best runner that will get opportunity. If I just say best runner, I would say Tyson Williams. But best runner that will get opportunity, Devontae Freeman. So I feel like. Uh, since they ain't going to give Tyson Williams the ball, they ain't going to give him the shot like that. Let Devontae Freeman do his thing. Just feed him. Feed him. And don't try to force feed everybody. Uh, really try to get him hot. Try to get him going. Be consistent. You ain't got to do this. Oh, uh, all, all running backs need to get an equal amount of care. No. Mm -mm, don't do that. Feed him. For, feed, feed this guy. Feed this guy and, and, and try to get him hot. If he ain't getting hot, okay, move on to the next guy. Try to get the next guy. But I want the Ravens to go with the hot hand. They haven't really established a hot hand in running back because it's been this guy, that guy, that guy, that guy. They're doing the same thing they did last season. Same thing. Now, it's funny because last season it seemed as if uh, they were trying to see the, about the passing game a little bit more early on in the season. They were really passing that ball so much early on last season, and they weren't running as much. Then after a little bit, um, they started running the ball a lot more. So is that how they're going to do it this season? We'll see.